Section four of the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Courtney Langdon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Inferno, Canto four, the first circle, the borderland, unbaptized worthies, illustrious pagans. A heavy thunderclap broke the deep sleep within my head, so that I roused myself, as would a person who is waked by force and standing up erect my rested eyes i moved around and with a steady gaze i looked about to know where i might be truth is i found myself upon the verge of pain's abysmal valley which collects the thunder roll of everlasting woes so dark it was so deep and full of mist that howsoe'er i gazed into its depths nothing at all did i discern therein into this blind world let us now descend the poet who was death-like pale, began. I will be first, and thou shalt second be. And I, who of his colour was aware, said, How am I to come if thou take fright, who it wont to be my comfort when afraid? The anguish of the people here below, he said to me, brings out upon my face the sympathy which thou dost take for fear. Since our long journey drives us, let us go. Thus he set forth, and thus he had me enter the first of circles girding the abyss therein as far as one could judge by listening there was no lamentation saving sighs which caused a trembling in the eternal air and this came from the grief devoid of torture felt by the throngs which many were and great of infants and of women and of men to me then my good teacher dost not ask what spirits these are whom thou seest here now i would have thee know ere thou go further that these sin not and though they merits have tis not enough for they did not have baptism the gateway of the creed believed by thee and if before christianity they lived they did not with due worship honour god and one of such as these am i myself for such defects and for no other guilt we are lost, and only heard to this extent that, in desire, we live deprived of hope. Great sorrow filled my heart on hearing this, because I knew of people of great worth, who in that borderland suspended were. Tell me, my teacher, tell me, thou my lord, I then began, though wishing to be sure about the faith which conquers every error. Came any ever by his own deserts, or by another's, hence, who then was blessed? and he who understood my covert speech replied to this condition i was come but newly when i saw a mighty one come here crowned with the sign of victory from hence he drew the earliest parent's shade and that of his son abel that of noah and moses the lawgiver and obedient abram the patriarch and david king israel with both his father and his sons and Rachel too, for whom he did so much, and many others. And he made them blessed, and I would have thee know that, earlier than these, there were no human spirits saved. Because he talked, we ceased not moving on, but all the while were passing through the wood, the wood, I mean, of thickly crowded shades. Not far this side of where I fell asleep had we yet gone, when I beheld a fire, which overcame a hemisphere of gloom. Somewhat away from it we were as yet, but not so far, but I could dimly see that honourable people held that place. O thou that honourest both art and science, who are these people that such honour have, that it divides them from the other's life? And he to me, The honourable fame which speaks of them in thy life world above, in heaven wins grace which thus advances them. And hereupon a voice was heard by me. Do honour to the loftiest of poets. His shade, which had departed, now returns. And when the voice had ceased and was at rest, four mighty shades I saw approaching us. Their looks were neither sorrowful nor glad. My kindly teacher then began to say, Look at the one who comes with sword in hand before the three, as if their lord he were. Homer he is, the sovereign poet. Horace, the satirist, the one that cometh next. The third is Ovid. Lucan is the last. 
since each of them in common shares with me the title which the voice of one proclaimed, they do me honour, and therein do well. Thus gathered, I beheld the fair assembly of those the masters of the loftiest song, which soareth like an eagle o'er the rest. Then, having talked among themselves a while, they turned around to me with signs of greeting, and when he noticed this, my teacher smiled, and even greater honour still they did me, for one of their own company they made me, so that amid such wisdom I was sixth. Thus on we went, as far as to the light, talking of things whereof is silence here becoming, even as speech was where we spoke. We reached a noble castle's foot, seven times encircled by high walls, and all around defended by a lovely little stream. This last we crossed as if dry land it were. Through seven gates with these sages I went in, and to a meadow of fresh grass we came. There people were with slow and serious eyes, and in their looks of great authority. They spoke but seldom, and with gentle voice. We therefore to one side of it drew back into an open place, so luminous and high, that each and all could be perceived. There on the green enamel opposite were shown to me the spirits of the great, for seeing whom I glory in myself. I saw Electra with companions many, of whom I knew both Hector and Aeneas, and Caesar armed with shining falcon eyes. I saw Camilla with Penthesilia upon the other side, and King Latinus, who with Lavinia his own daughter sat. I saw that Brutus, who drove Tarquin out, Lucretia, Julia, Marcia, and Cornelia, and all alone I saw the Saladin. Then, having raised my brows a little higher, the teacher I beheld of those that know, seated amid a philosophic group. They all look up to him, all honour him. There Socrates and Plato I beheld, who nearer than the rest are at his side. Democritus, who thinks the world chance born. Diogenes, Anaxagoras, and Thales, Empedocles, Heraclitus, and Zeno. Of qualities I saw the good collector, Dioscorides, I mean. Orpheus I saw, Tully and Livy, and moral Seneca, Euclid the geometer, and Ptolemy, Hippocrates, Avicenna, Galen, Averroes, who made the famous comment. I cannot speak of all of them in full, because my long theme drives me on so fast that oft my words fall short of what I did. The sixfold band now dwindles down to two. My wise guide leads me by a different path out of the calm into the trembling air, and to a place I come where naught gives light. End of Inferno Canto 4